Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In this modeling technique video, I'm going to show you how to weather a model with pastels. I don't know if any of you like weathering your models as much as I do, but to me, this is a really fun part of the build process. This is a step where you can really add realism to your kit and really set your models apart. And I thought I would share one of my favorite techniques with you. For this technique, I use inexpensive artist pastels. You can find the artist pastels at just about any craft store. In this video, we're going to be going over the tools that you need for this process. I'll talk about how I apply the pastels and go into my technique for that. I'll also talk about several bonus techniques that will really help bring your kits to the next level. And these include pencil panel line correction. It also includes panel highlighting with graphite. We will talk about pastel dot filtering and my technique for that. I use pastels for several different aspects of weathering on the kit, including footprints, gun smoke residue, and also exhaust staining on the kit. This kit is Airfix's 148 scale Supermarine Spitfire FR Mark 14. I have done an in process model kit review on this kit. And I have featured it in several technique videos, including how to spray a realistic metal finish and how to apply an acrylic panel line wash. As of this morning, this is how the kit looked after the panel line wash. You can see that the shadows are enhanced in the panel lines, but there's not a lot of detail on the surface of the kit so far. You can see a little bit of the streaking in this photo, but again, it's pretty bare bones as far as the weathering goes after the panel line wash. For me, the first step in the weathering process is to locate a good reference photo of the plane that you're modeling or one that's very similar. And here we can see two aircraft that are from the same squadron as the one that I'm modeling. These planes are also painted in the speed silver aluminum lacquer that was applied to Spitfires of the time period right at the wing roots. It's very dirty and you would expect that. That's where people are walking. You also notice the exhaust staining as it comes back along the fuselage. And these are going to really be my guide as I proceed in the weathering process. Tools needed for this process include a pair of the nitrile gloves. Working with pastels, oils from your fingerprints, or any moisture will mess up the finish. You want to get your finish completed and then quickly seal it with a coat of clear coat to protect the finish. The main tool that we will be using is a closely cropped paintbrush. And what I mean by closely cropped is I cut the bristles off of this brush about a millimeter away from the metal tip. And that's a very good applicator for the pastels. Of course, we need the artist pastels themselves. You can see my heavily used set here. You can tell the colors I use most often. And I change it up depending on the type of weathering that I'm going to be doing and the base color I'm weathering over. The next tool we'll need is a kneadable eraser. And this is an eraser that you can shape and form after you do the weathering with the pastels. If you make mistakes or you want to tone it down a bit, you can go over it and use the eraser to kind of pull off most of what you've done. Moving on to the application, after I load up the brush with the pastels by rubbing it into the pastel, I will go to areas of the most visible weathering and I will start to tap the surface of the kit with the brush. I will work the dust from the pastels into the surface of the kit. I'll continue to layer this in areas that are more weathered and have more dirt and grime built up. And this is a layering process. So I go over it, I do it, and as I move away from the spot of the most weathering, let's say at the exhaust, the most staining is gonna be right behind the exhaust stack. But as you move back along the kit, it should be less and less. You have to just get a feel for it. This is a very forgiving process, so if you kind of overdid it and you don't like your results, go ahead and erase it and start over again and just work through it that way. There is a bit of trial and error with this procedure as there is with any other advanced technique. And a lot of times in weathering, less is more, especially if you're going for a realistic look instead of the artistic look. This one is super forgiving. I love the organic look of it. And to me, it's more realistic than a lot of the more drastic weathering techniques. 
Moving on to a bonus feature here, a lot of times you have panel lines that get sanded a little bit much on your seams, and so you have a panel line that kind of fades out as it goes over the seam of the aircraft. And what I like to do is take a mechanical pencil, and where I have panel lines that have faded out, or in this case a molding glitch, I will actually just draw that in. It fools your eye into thinking that the panel line continues. You don't have to re-engrave it. Underneath a clear coat, this looks really, really convincing. The second bonus technique I'll go over is panel highlighting with graphite. And here I just take a soft graphite pencil and I draw really hard on a piece of cardboard and make a really dark spot there with the graphite. And then I take a Q-tip and I rub it in that, getting a little bit of graphite on the Q-tip. And then I can very precisely apply that to an individual panel and really make that panel kind of pop out of the surface. Again, less is more when you're doing weathering, and you want that panel to pop out, but not in a way that really catches your attention. So it's subtle realism. If you overdo it, your kneadable eraser will take most of it off, and you can achieve a realistic result. The next bonus technique we'll talk about is dot filtering or streak filtering with the pastels. But I use different colors and put streaks on the airframe in random spots, and I will use the kneadable eraser to erase that. It just adds a slight level of enhanced detail, and it adds to the realism. This is a subtle effect. You can choose whether or not you want to do something like that on your kit. I will continue to keep you guys posted on the progress that I'm making on this kit and any techniques that I'm doing that I think you guys would like to see how they're done. In this series, you're seeing in real time how I build models and how I weather my models. To me, the pastel weathering is one of my favorite aspects of the build, and I love the results that I can achieve with this method. All right, I'd love to know if any of you out there use pastel weathering currently, and if your application of the pastels is different than mine. If so, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, model on.